Welcome everybody to the University of California, San Diego, JFIT Japan Forum webinar series. I'm Ulrike Schede and I'm a professor of Japanese studies at the School of Global Policy and Strategy at UC San Diego. Today we will start our series on COVID-19 in Japan and our topic today is politics and society. Before I introduce our three speakers, Professors Onuma, Professor Yoshikawa, and Shimizu, allow me to do just a quick introduction to where you are. Uh, you are at, uh, at uh, the University of California, San Diego, at the School of Global Policy and Strategy, uh, where we offer seven degree programs, including a Master's of International Affairs that has a Japan focus, and also a Master's of Public Policy and a PhD. If you're interested in these programs, you should uh, go to this website, gps.ucsd.edu. At GPS, we have a Japan center called JFIT, the Japan Forum for Innovation and Technology. There too, we have several programs and um, I wanna just bring to your attention three. The first called JUMP, which stands for Josei, which is Japanese for women, for upper management. Um, a program called AIM, Advanced International Management Program, and a Global Talent Program. And again, you can go to this website and find out more. Um, our COVID-19 in Japan series will have four iterations, and they're all at this exact same time. So this is 4.30 p.m. in San Diego and 8.30 a.m. on Wednesdays. Uh, in Tokyo. And the next three upcoming ones after this one are on public health and medical systems, the changing workplace and HR management, and the economy. Uh, I will announce this uh, towards the end of our uh, session here as well. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, so uh, let me just give you a quick timeline so that we're all on the same page of what is happening in Japan. And I will try to do this quite fast and not eat up too much time here. But uh, this is the number of cases infected in red, deceased in, in yellow, and recovered in blue. And the timeline in Japan goes something like this. Um, the first case of COVID-19 uh, occurred in Tokyo on January 31st, uh, when a cab driver got infected. This led to Japan's now uh, well-known cluster buster approach of just trying to um, contain the cluster. Uh, and an immediate ban was uh, um, issued on travelers from China because this was the Chinese New Year. Um, by the late February, um, 100 or so people were infected, or at least were known cases. And uh, the government took uh, quite some actions, including canceling the emperor's birthday party, which was a huge event, um, announcing um, a request for jishuku, self-restraint. And um, on the 27th of February, all schools were closed down. Hand sanitizers showed up everywhere, masks were worn. Uh, so people were actually um, complying with the self-restraint. And to, as you can see, the number of cases did not really increase. However, the government got ready in mid-March and um, issued a special emergency law or amended it so that um, they were uh, prepared for uh, the possibility of locking people down. Then came the uh, beautiful weekend of March 20th when the sun was wonderful and the weather was nice and the cherry blossoms were, were gorgeous and everybody went out and uh, people got a little bit too um, unconcerned with their self-constraint. Um, Tokyo Mayor Koike then warned that this was now not no longer a good situation and asked people to stay at home. On April 7th, the Abe uh, government declared a state of emergency for the three metropolitan areas, which covered 60% of the population. And on April 13th, a nationwide emergency was declared. Um, and uh, people were asked to stay at home for a golden week, which is actually today is the first day of the golden week uh, vacation. So uh, Japan is on vacation for the next 12 days. And um, let me just, I'm sorry. Uh, the, uh, just recently it was announced that the schools will stay closed until, in Japan until June 1. And um, uh, so as of today, 
Japan has 13,721 total cases, which compares, of course, to more than a million in the United States, um, and 413 deaths. So one of the big questions in Japan is why there are so, why, why these numbers are so limited. And we don't actually know. Uh, one reason is that a lot of young people are infected. There are some medical questions that we'll actually address next week um, in, this, uh, in this forum. Um, but I'm gonna bring this up here because it also creates a, a dilemma in politics uh, in a, of an interesting sort because of course, there is a concern. The, situ the hospitals are full. There is a real concern that this will now go overboard and become a pandemic also in Japan, and that these numbers are not fully reflective of the reality. But if there are so few cases, what can the government do in terms of locking people down? So with that, let me introduce um, our, our three panelists here who can help us uh, find answers to this question. We will start with Ms. Mizuho Onuma, who is a professor at Taisho University and uh, formerly was an upper house member and um, parliamentary secretary of health and welfare. Uh, she represented the uh, prefecture of Yamagata. And those of you who are not uh, so keen on the um, Japanese geography, it is west of uh, Fukushima in the northern part of Honshu. The second speaker will be Professor Hisashi Yoshikawa from the University of Tokyo Graduate School of Public Policy. Uh, this is a school that we at GPS have a, um, a, a joint degree with. And so, and I actually know that many of the students that have graduated from this joint degree are online. So uh, welcome to you all. Yoshikawa Sensei is also our very first graduate of our one year um, Global Leadership Institute program. So it's always great to have an alum uh, in our group. Thank you, Yoshikawa-san. And then last but not the least, we have Professor Kei Shimizu uh, from the University of Pittsburgh Department of Political Science. Kei is an expert in the institutions and organizations of Japan's political economy, in particular small firms and farmers. And she will talk about that angle in her presentation today. And with that, without further ado, let me stop my share and invite Onuma Sensei to begin our discussion. Hi, I'm Rane. Uh, I'm Ms. Ho, and I'm from Taisho University. Uh, I'm very glad to attend this forum today. Thank you for Professor Ricky and other participants and all viewers. Today, I present what the Abe administration have done until today and how Japanese people think about these policies and why we don't have as many as the debt compared with the other countries, even we are not locked down. And the leaders over the world, uh, people will strongly support their leaders, seeing the supporting rate, Prime Minister Merkel, Germany, 79%, uh, Minister, uh, Prime Minister Conte of Italy, 71%. The President Macron, France, 51%. Uh, however, our Prime Minister Abe slightly decreased his support. The recent supporting rate goes down from 43 to 39%. Why Abe administration's supporting rate doesn't go up over 50% or 60%? Even we don't have a large number of deaths compared with these countries. There are four policies which Japanese government mistook the order. Our first one is mask called a venom mask. In March, many politicians wearing no masks. One of the politicians said, there is no mask in the market. So if all the politicians wear masks, people would think they can afford masks because they are privileged people. Taiwan already started to deliver masks to the people. So Prime Minister Abe decided to deliver masks all the citizens in Japan. It was April 1st. According to NHK poll, over 70% of the people do not support this Avena mask. What Japanese people want was not masks, but the speedy support to the people and compensation for the enterprises. It doesn't come up on April 1st. And people wanted more PCR check, 
until today, only 10,000 check can be done in a day. It's very small number. Because most of the hospitals tend to rely on public health centers to do PCR check. And they are too busy to catch up the pressures of infection. The second one is which Prime Minister have joined with the famous young sister, Gen Hoshino, on website on April 12th. The thing named Dancing at Home, uh, you can see it on YouTube. Um, Prime Minister Abe is not singing, is not dancing, but drinking coffee on the sofa, playing with his dog. He wanted to send a message to the youngest to stay at home, but it is criticized because he is like a king. The government had to choose a better person to send a message, not using Prime Minister himself, I think. Third one is that discussion lost sight of goals toward a way and amount of payment to the people. First of all, in LDP, there was a strong suggestion, 100,000 yen, about 930 US dollars, to everyone. But because of objection from Ministry of Finance, it is decided to 300,000 yen, around 2,800 US dollars, to the household which decreased a half of income because <clears throat> of COVID-19. However, the procedure is too complicated and it is difficult to benefit first. So new Kome party asked prime minister many times to benefit 100,000 yen to everyone, including children. If he would not accept this, they will support a ruling party's bill. It means to leave a coalition. So on April 17th, Abe changed his mind to recombine the supplementary budget bill. It is very, very rare case that after all the procedure is done in LDP and cabinet decision was already done. The fourth one is the timing when the government declared emergency. 75% of the people think it is too late. Not a Governor of Tokyo Koike, but also many governors were pushing the government strongly to declare the emergency earlier, because in rural areas, youngest comes from Tokyo spread COVID-19. They want the people in cities stay at home and not to come to rural areas. But the government declared an emergency on April 7th, and the spread to the nationwide on 16th is only 12 days ago. Starting from April 1st, the government is so messed up. And the Tokyo governor, Koike, Osaka governor, Yoshimura are more popular than the prime minister. Their actions are first and more strict than the government suggested. Some journalists said, this is a time for the governors to build a new party to make a big change in Japanese politics. However, I don't think it will happen we, we have done many times, but it doesn't go well. Still, nearly 40% of the Japan support the government policies, which support small and mid enterprises, for example, up to 1 million yen for freelance, 2 million to small and mid enterprises. Also, employment, employment adjustment subsidized to the enterprises subsidized for the parents who cannot go to work to take care of their children because of closing schools from 2nd of March. And the numbers of infected people is not so increasing rapidly. Yesterday in Tokyo, 112. The day before was 39 people. So I think next month, supporting rate would be recovered from 39 to up to over 40. Um, next topic, why a number of dead is not as large as US or other European countries. That is because our culture, our society, we have been for a long time. First is, it's easy, taking off the shoes when we back home and we take a bath every day before sleep. The second, uh, we wear the masks, especially during the winter and the spring time, and prevent it from virus, a virus and the hay fever. And from kindergarten, we are strictly taught to wash hands. Even public toilets provide soap, and there are waterworks 
in every park in Japan. It is also sad because we have got many vaccinations, especially BCG, might prevent people from uh, COVID-19. It is not, however, it is not scientifically proved yet. Our medical system and the universal health insurance make people more healthy and healthier than the people in other countries, as we keep one of the long life for men and women, average 83 years old. And the last one, I think this is the most important, that culture of shame. It is said that after World War II, our democracy is planted by US, and I agreed. Japanese people don't advocate our own opinion compared with other countries' people. If someone suggests an idea, many will follow to say something different from others. Many Japanese think it is a shame. Our culture of our shame is strongly connected to our moral sense and the collective consciousness. Everyone is staying at home. Why shouldn't I? That recognition makes people staying at home. The government says reduce contact with others by 80%, not to meet people. So if I go, in, go out in that situation, it's a shame. But our culture of shame doesn't mean equal that the government can control the people. We, criti we, we can criticize our government freely, not like as China and Russia, and we don't use personal data to control people like South Korea or Singapore. We strongly support our democracy system. Lockdown and penalty are easy way to control people, but the Japanese government tried to control the situation not to restrict people's private right, to trust people's own moral sense that we have been built for a long time. It is said that the Japan is the safest countries in the world. I think this is the one of the moral lodester. I don't know where we, whether we are right or wrong way to go, it is too early to evaluate. However, we would fight in the Japanese way. And in, and in this view, I support basic idea that the Japanese government believe in us. Thank you. Um, okay, may I now invite uh, Professor Yoshikawa to um, offer his comments on um, the current situation. And Yoshikawa-sensei, as I introduced you, I forgot an important detail, which is sure. that in a former life, you were at the Ministry of Economic Trade and Industry and uh, stationed in places like Paris and, and, and in the United States as well. And so um, uh, we'll, you'll come in with a viewpoint of um, politics and the bureaucracy. So we'll look forward to your comments. Thank you. Um, hello? Can you hear me? OK, good. Um, thank you, Ulrike, for a very, very kind introduction. Um, good morning, I said, um, or good, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Hisashi Yoshikawa. Um, Today, um, I will briefly talk about three points. Um, first, I'd like to um, look back at what we heard or experienced since the beginning of the year in Japan with regard to COVID-19. By doing this, I would like to highlight a couple of things um, that were unique to Japan. Uh, this is a sort of a background. This is the first point. Um, secondly, um, I would like to share with you how I observed, as Ulrike already said, uh, the attitude of the Japanese people on the street, particularly after the government declared emergency early April. This is the second point. And thirdly, um, I will briefly talk about the related policy and observation in terms of trade-off between economy and human security, public health. Um, this is um, uh, the agenda. And let me begin with the first point. Um, as Onuma-san already said, um, you see, elaborated already, but uh, to me, um, year 2020 is a sort of special year for many Japanese because uh, we are supposed to have Olympic Games in Tokyo 
uh, which was uh, that was scheduled. Um, at the same time, um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, particularly Onuma-san. Um, at the same time, it was widely believed that the prime minister may be stepping down after this historic event. I may be wrong. Um, before the Olympics, in addition, uh, the state visit of Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, was also scheduled in April, early April, um, which was naturally postponed. Um, the outbreak of uh, coronavirus started in China at the beginning of the year, again, when, Mr., uh, when the Abe administration was regarded to be in the final stage of its term. Um, 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 Mr. Abe already recorded the longest period in office as prime minister since Meiji era, and also celebrated and started new Reiwa era. And uh, well, politically, and successfully won series of national elections, both in upper and lower house. However, at the same time, um, I could say that uh, Prime Minister himself has been suffering from series of, well, scandals, um, such as Takura Party and the sale of national property at a very low rate price during the latter half of his term. This is a sort of political environment we have. Um, the question here is whether this environment affected the decision uh, with regard to coronavirus. For example, um, many people believe that until the announcement of the postponement of the Olympic Games, the government was rather quiet on this well, corona issue. Um, the other thing I'd like to draw your attention is the case of Diamond Princess, um, big, gorgeous cruise ship. This was probably the first encounter with the threat of the virus for Japan, which took place in February in Yokohama. Uh, that government apparently um, did not seem to be fully ready to deal, to deal with this challenge. Um, it was um, a dramatic incident, but still, it was the fire on the other side of the river. Um, the point here is, to me, is what we have learned from this experience in preparing for the full-scale spread of the virus in Japan, which actually happened afterwards. Um, this is the first point. Um, second point is how I um, um, how the Japanese people behave, um, particularly under the ongoing emergency, as um, Ulrike already suggested. Um, I believe most of us on the street are very serious. Serious here means that uh, people understand the emergency situation, necessity of its unusual measures, I would say, and try to stay at home as long as possible. But at the same time, there are people, of course, who go out. As you know well, our lockdown, as Uri already said, is only a request basis, not backed with fines or penalties. Um, therefore, there are always people who don't obey, who intentionally go out. Um, but there are other groups of people who believe they have to, they have to go out. Who are they? Um, sort of ironically, they are the salary months, um, the employees of companies. Interestingly, um, even big companies in Japan are not prepared for work from home. Um, because they are not well equipped with ICT necessary equipments, apparatus, or services. This lack of equipment and service is more apparent in education. 
This is why they cannot do e-learning and so, so on, particularly in elementary school, junior high and high schools. We have found, we, we came to find that uh, we are really behind in this regard. This is the second point. Um, lastly, but not least, uh, I'd like to talk about the policy. Um, as Onuma's already um, um, elaborated, but let me add a couple of things. Um, the state of emergency was declared early May, as, well, as being said, and the revised emergency economic package will be approved by the Diet by the end of the month. Though many people in Japan think, as Onuma's already said, that is too late. Not probably too little though, but I believe that the government has been trying to hit the right balance between infection control and the maintenance of economic activity as much as possible. At the beginning of this argument, um, like many other countries like the US, the people focus mostly on infection control. However, after the declaration of emergency, people started to pay more attention on economics. This is what I, how I see. In fact, uh, it is said the government uh, seems to pay more attention on economics, whereas uh, the municipal governments, such as Tokyo Metropolitan, put more emphasis on infection control. Probably this is because of division of labor. However, we don't know whether there is an enough coordination between the national government and the municipal governments. Um, other aspect would be at national level, whether this right balance is appropriately discussed and ensured. Um, because um, it was reported by media that uh, Mr. Suga, cabinet secretary, who is regarded to pay, uh, play a pivotal role in coordinating policies in the cabinet, and is supposed to be close to Mr. Abe. In fact, I, I, don't, I really don't know, but it is regarded in that way, was not involved in this uh, um, uh, policy discussion um, related to this uh, coronavirus. Instead, it is also said that the former Ministry of Economy and Trade METI officials who work, who now work closely with Mr. Abe at Prime Minister's office, have become more influential in making policies. Um, they seem to represent sort of economic consideration, and probably this is also why, at this point in time, this administration is seen to be a kind of chaotic. Um, let me stop here and again correct, correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much Yoshikawa Sensei and uh, let's move to our third speaker before we open up for discussion. And uh, I'd like to invite Professor Shimizu to talk about uh, the economic consequences and the politics uh, of how that's handled. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Everyone in Japan, I guess. And uh, good afternoon to those of you on the West Coast. Um, I like to spend my uh, time that given to me on um, focusing on the business sector uh, because really one of the um, biggest sectors uh, that have suffered in this pandemic, uh, both in Japan and the US are businesses, especially small businesses uh, that have not necessarily been prepared for this kind of economic uh, shutdown that has already lasted for uh, more than a month in most places. And in, in particular, I wanted to focus my time on some of the very features of Japanese business, especially small businesses uh, that have been criticized in the past as being perhaps unproductive, uh, maybe uncompetitive, uh, and helping to protect uh, the most vulnerable sectors of Japan's economy at the cost of perhaps a more rapid economic growth or more innovative economy. So let me explain further by highlighting three defining features uh, that may in fact fall under this category uh, during this pandemic. 
The first is the emphasis on keeping businesses alive uh, and shunning excessive cutthroat competition, uh, uh, the likes of which have been promoted in some uh, economies in recent years. So Japan's post-war business model presumed that companies keep workers employed and in turn, the government protects businesses. Um, and that's sort of roughly speaking. And in so doing, Japan developed the so-called welfare through work model, where the assumption is that almost everyone works uh, and companies provide welfare and the state protects the companies. Since the 1990s, after Japan's banking crisis and the bursting of Japan's bubble economy, um, this model received much criticism for dampening competition and basically for keeping Japan underproductive. And some have even labeled the most unproductive companies zombie firms, uh, referring to the fact that these companies are kept artificially alive uh, when in a real competitive economy, they should have either closed office or have gone bankrupt. Uh, but both during the financial crisis of 2008-09, a decade ago, and now during this pandemic, uh, at least so far, this model that has uh, thrived and so still survived in some ways in Japan uh, has allowed Japan to keep unemployment relatively low. Uh, this time, the government has announced a business continuation package, the Jizokka Kyufukin, uh, that Onumasa mentioned of one to two million Japanese yen or 10 to 20 thousand uh, dollars, the first of its kind uh, in Japan, uh, which goes directly to small businesses to help them meet immediate needs such as rent or payroll. Uh, and as a result, perhaps, we are not seeing the kind of unemployment numbers uh, making headline news in the U.S. in recent days. Uh, apparently, it's predicted that the U.S. will see upwards of 20 percent unemployment by June, uh, which is really uh, quite frightening. Uh, I want to sort of, uh, as a side note, touch on what Onuma-san has mentioned, the 100,000 uh, or Jumayen, roughly $1,000 that is going to be distributed to every Japanese citizen in the coming weeks. Um, this blanket distribution is in fact uh, at odds with Japan's business model. That is, um, of course, if the state protects companies, uh, presumably keeping most people employed, then these direct distributions from the state should really target uh, perhaps the most needy and vulnerable, those whose jobs slip through the cracks uh, and could not be saved by the state or those who cannot work uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but of course, uh, this kind of coordination perhaps is more difficult uh, in these uh, pandemic times. And of course, we have yet to mention the social implications of keeping more people employed through the crisis. The long-term benefits of which may be greater than just the paychecks that continue to be paid to workers, the uh, emotional, the psychological effect of being, un, uh, being employed uh, throughout the pandemic, regardless of the size of the paycheck, may be a huge long-term benefit uh, to the labor market in Japan. Um, the second feature of Japanese business goes hand in hand with the first, and that's overemployment. Uh, and perhaps the flip side of this is uh, still the significant barriers to layoffs in Japan. Uh, so far, we've heard very little of layoffs and furloughs, uh, the way perhaps the U.S. companies are using them at this time. Again, this feature has received a lot of criticism for supporting a rigid labor market and perhaps needlessly saddling companies with unproductive workers. Uh, but throughout the last uh, two decades or so of a sluggish economy, uh, Japan's unemployment numbers have remained consistently low. Uh, and economists point to this as somewhat of a puzzle, uh, but in fact, perhaps it's not uh, necessarily a puzzle as much as something that's built into the political economic system uh, that Japan has maintained thus far. So during this COVID pandemic, uh, Japan has once again worked hard to keep unemployment low uh, by helping small businesses make payroll even during weeks of government requested shutdowns. Uh, one of them is the Koyo Chose uh, Joseki, or the funds to maintain employment, which has um, received some criticism for being insufficient in its funding, but at least has helped businesses comply uh, with government requests to close during the height of the pandemic uh, by helping them make payroll even while their doors are shut. 
Okay, and then the third point uh, that I think uh, is uh, perhaps another feature of Japanese business that is helping during these times is the high degree of organization among and around Japanese businesses uh, that protects insiders or existing businesses uh, and at times perhaps has been criticized for preventing new competitors from entering the market as easily as it is in other countries. So small businesses, for example, are highly organized in Japan through both local and national organizations. Uh, many businesses belong to trade groups and industry groups of all kinds that are connected to all sorts of other entities, including politicians. Um, and also external organizations and networks also serve a similar purpose. So take, for example, the main bank system in which almost all businesses have a dedicated bank with which it has a long and involved relationship. There's even a term for this in Japanese uh, called relationship banking, which means exactly what it sounds like. Uh, this is in stark contrast to the experiences reported by many U.S. small businesses that are not able to get through to their banks. Uh, to apply for, for example, the much publicized PPP or the Payroll Protection Program. Uh, in fact, I have a former college roommate who runs a fantastic ice cream business in Arizona, who she couldn't even get through to her usual banker and had to open a new account at another bank just to apply for the PPP, uh, let alone actually get uh, help uh, getting the PPP. So this degree of organization uh, even extends to farmers in Japan, uh, the vast majority of whom belong to the JA or Japan Agricultural Cooperative, which is a na nationwide organization of farmers. And most farmers, I think, belong to the JA. Whether they support the JA or not, uh, they are members. And thanks to its ability to coordinate everything from production quantities to distribution, pricing, and the JA even serves as a bank to farmers. A uh, few farmers are having to throw away large quantities of produce like we see farmers in Wisconsin and in Ohio, where we hear about milk being dumped into the drains and eggs being smashed, um, simply because farmers are not nearly as coordinated or organized as they are uh, in Japan. And of course, JA has received its fair share of uh, criticisms in the past for uh, not allowing enough competition within the agricultural sector in Japan. But during this pandemic, this very organization is perhaps helping to keep a lot of farmers in business and the food supply chain in Japan uh, has not been uh, endangered by in any way so far. So I like to suggest that perhaps this pandemic will be a time to reevaluate Japan's business practices that were on their way out. Uh, or being pushed out, uh, including things like keeping large cash reserves, um, long-term planning, employment practices that perhaps kept unemployment low at the cost to shareholders, uh, et cetera. And I wanted to use uh, my last line here to uh, shoot a question to Orike, uh, who I know has uh, written a, a very great book on Choose and Focus. Uh, because now there's also this uh, whole question of whether or not choose and focus has gone too far in Japan. Uh, and perhaps this pandemic is trying to get businesses to uh, stop uh, choosing and focusing and uh, keeping uh, their employment doors uh, more open. So I'd like to end my comments there for now. Well, thank you, Kay. And thank you, um, all three speakers. That was wonderful. Uh, since Kay um, asked a question, I will just answer that and then also invite you to maybe comment on each other uh, um, presentations before I address the Q&A from the audience. So the business organization is a really interesting question, right? Um, did this go too far? So for instance, um, uh, Japan for the last couple of years has put a more effort, a more emphasis on return on equity as a measure of corporate performance, which is actually in contrast to the the expectation of continued employment. Right? And uh, I don't think they've gone too far, I mean, uh, but, but uh, this pandemic will lead to a reevaluation how important um, accounting measures really are and whether maybe in the long run, even though overemployment and this organization <coughs> through these various mechanisms, as well as the relationship banking and so forth, those are very expensive, 
right? But in the long run, they may actually look cheap compared to the social costs that the distress um, is, are, are, um, is causing um, in, in the United States. So uh, a re-evaluation will definitely be very important um, on, the, uh, on, on, on all sides, including the business strategy advice. Uh, are there other comments among you that you would like to, um, you know, speakers? Onuma-san, uh, uh, I, I think Yoshikawa-san asked you a few questions about Abe uh, Thori Daijin. Would you like to uh, maybe address that? Yep. Can I? Well, either one. Uh, Yoshikawa-san, okay. why, why don't, let's, let's have Onuma-san go first and then... Uh, yeah, yeah. And okay, then you Okay, um, uh, what the Yushikawa-sin said about the, um, the Olympic Games and then Xi, Xi Jinping's coming is a big political issue. I very agree because um, we couldn't uh, have, uh, the government couldn't have uh, uh, emergency declaration until the Olympic Games and then Xi Jinping's uh, coming to Japan. These uh, two big issues had done and after that, they could finally think of a uh, declaration of emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And then also the, the comment that you said about the, um, um, the people from uh, METI are very controlling um, <clears throat> cabinet. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know uh, exact situation, but it is said to and believed um, especially the political society, uh, mm -hmm. these uh, things are right too, because um, there are some sort of political uh, fight between uh, Prime Minister and Mr. Suga or um, mm -hmm. uh, Nikai-san and Mr. Kishida-san, right. and these are very fixed and messed up, also uh, very influenced to the uh, policies that we have mm -hmm. been made in this two months. Mm. Okay. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Thank you, um, Onuma san, for your comment. And uh, you see, um, coming back to my, present, my own presentation at, at the beginning, um, I was not too straightforward. But uh, my main concern was something like this <clears throat> um, having heard and looked. Um, or what happened from the beginning of this uh, um, um, this year, I would say, about uh, coronavirus. Um, um, we are we may be uh, really unfortunate to have a um, big question um, 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 toward uh, toward the administration or toward the government whether you see our the um, trustworthiness is enough or not. That's my sort of fundamental question. Um, um, you see, um, um, can we really trust the good or right performance of the government or not? That's my, you see, uh, the largest concern. I, I was not very straightforward um, in my presentation. So what do you think about uh, this question, um, Onumasa? Well, or, um, okay. please. Okay. Um, well, it's it's still difficult to evaluate right uh, right now because um, I, as I mentioned, that um, the, the support rate is a, a slightly decreasing, but it's not heavily decreased, and then. Still, forty percent of the people are supporting the administration, and as I said, uh, the mess up from the beginning of the April, they are very uh, angry that uh, what Abenu Mask is or uh, dancing um, dancing at home with uh, uh, Gen Yoshino and the Prime Minister Abe is just sitting on the sofa and drinking coffee. These two are very worse one 
of wars too, I, I think. But after that, um, the government uh, were very, uh, tried to speed up their policies. So nowadays it's a little bit uh, uh, different from the atmosphere that we have in the beginning of the April. And then, of course, uh, we are not sure that we might have to postpone the declaration of emergency, especially in Tokyo or maybe Osaka to uh, until the uh, maybe June or I don't know, July. But the, I think other rural areas governors are uh, very relieved because, the, for example, Yamagata is getting infectors are uh, only one or two people in a day, and the Iwaju prefecture still zero. So they will be ended the uh, emergency declaration at uh, the end of uh, the golden weeks. But uh, the point is the, the Tokyo. And then uh, as the uh, Mr. Yogokura, the top of the chairman of the doctors association uh, today announced that uh, it will be very difficult to uh, control the situation and then end up the emergency integration um, not uh, at, this, at the same time in Washington. So I think uh, the government uh, had, is now uh, starting to think to postpone the uh, emergency integration in Tokyo or Osaka. So, uh, in May or June, how the people will uh, evaluate the government. Uh, this is the key. But the situation is a bit different from the beginning of April and right now, I think. So thank you very much. Um, we have a number of Q&A questions come in from mm. the audience. And I would like to bring the audience into this uh, conversation. Um, let's start with the first one, which is actually from our good friend at GPS, uh, Nobuo Tanaka. Uh, Tanaka-san would like, uh, has the following observation. Um, the, the countries that, many of the countries that are successful in containing the virus and where people seem to be content have female leaders, uh, whether that's Germany, Taiwan, New Zealand, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, many of those I would say are also fairly small countries, so maybe that's a little easier. However, as Tanaka-san points out, the mayor of Tokyo is female, and so um, he would like to know um, uh, whether, uh, maybe Onema-san has a question for you, uh, since you were in charge of women issues when you were uh, at the Ministry of uh, uh, Labor, uh, whether there is something there and whether Koike-san as the mayor of Tokyo has an impact on this development. So is it uh, okay? Onema -san. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is very, uh, interesting political issue that we are talking about it in the, in the world, I guess. Um, and I very feel like um, the female politicians are very care of their children or elderly because um, still now a lot of uh, females take care of the children more than the fathers in Japan. And I think it's compared with other countries, um, ladies commitment uh, in in uh, household stuff and take care I mean, the children is very important for uh, preventing from um, every virus and I also said to my husband uh, wash your hands uh, every day or uh, every time you get home back and then I don't think the man um, very he said to the others, wash your hand, wash your hand, wash your hand. It's only doctors that they said. So the, um, so I think the uh, Koike-san and also the, uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, and uh, I think um, and the, the top of the uh, Taiwan leader, uh, they are very like, um, uh, like a, they, they, they are uh, very much near to the people who take care of the 
uh, children and the uh, elderly. And then most of the people are, uh, for me, the same. Um, a lot of women ask me to do the women's policies. And the, we, we have a lot of uh, voices from the women. But uh, unfortunately, especially in Japan, not so many uh, women try to reach the uh, male politicians to, uh, to uh, support the ladies' uh, policies. That's the kind of big uh, difference. So Koike-san and uh, also the governor of Yamagata are uh, uh, female. So they are um, very uh, nervous about the uh, COVID-19 from the beginning. Uh, I very fear it from the difference, yeah, from Prime Minister sorry, Abe sorry. or the My other uh, Kay, can I ask you to bring you in on this? Do you think that this crisis will um, further enhance the or propel the role of women in Japanese politics? Unfortunately, uh, I cannot uh, say that that is going to happen. Um, it, it, and there are several reasons uh, why. It's just not been a main uh, topic of political discussion uh, under this pandemic. People are much more concerned about, of course, the virus itself, but also the economy. Uh, the exception to this, I think, of course, is the role of Governor Koike of Tokyo. Uh, who has been extremely uh, vociferous and, uh, and uh, um, clear in her opinions from the very beginning, perhaps even more so than Prime Minister Abe. And so her uh, role as an individual, I think, uh, in uh, Japanese politics may soar or increase, uh, given uh, her leadership in this uh, pandemic, especially over a large population like Tokyo. But I have yet to see any signs of the role of women in particular um, go at the national level and uh, become more prominent at the national level. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure that I, uh, that I would see that happening right now for Japan. Thank you very much. Uh, we have some other questions. Let me sh uh, change topics a little bit um, on testing and social distancing. So the question is, um, is the low number of cases just a matter of not testing a lot? Um, and I guess that's probably the case, except the low number of deaths, probably not something that could be not reported. But so, um, so on the social distancing, are the trains really empty now? Is Tokyo really under lockdown? Um, and, um, and when will it stop? What, what would be under what conditions Will Tokyo say, and, and, and if Tokyo does it, then the other areas might do it too, um, uh, that under what conditions will they uh, open this back up? Who are you throwing the question to, Orika? Oh, um, uh, 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 Kay, you want to gamble this and then we let the other two. <laughs> So, so of course it's a gamble. Uh, but for those of you who are not, in, you know, our viewers who are not in Japan, uh, I just want to make clear that uh, Tokyo and Japan not being in lockdown per se, but a government requested uh, closure uh, has some major differences, both for health purposes as well as business purposes. So, for example, many restaurants are still open. Uh, they practice. Uh, extensive precautions, separating tables, um, only allowing a few customers in at a time. Uh, but it's very different from a complete lockdown the way uh, many areas like New York or the Bay Area in, in, or California uh, has done. Uh, and so, yes, foot traffic and um, you know, number of people on trains, et cetera, has decreased significantly. In Tokyo, it has not yet reached the 80% decrease that uh, Prime Minister Abe had uh, targeted as, or wanted as a goal. Uh, but certainly, especially these next uh, few days, week-long uh, enforced vacation, I, I guess, staycation uh, during Golden Week has decreased uh, the amount of traffic, um, so much so that highways around Tokyo that are usually clogged at this time of the year are completely empty. And so there's been a significant change in the behavior of people. 
Um, and I think that because perhaps because Japan did not uh, use a lockdown, uh, and, and this is partly a legal issue where Japan does not have the ability to enforce uh, a lockdown uh, from a legal perspective, but perhaps because of that, um, even after the emergency situation has been lifted, uh, people in Japan may be uh, more compliant with requests to maintain, for example, social distancing uh, and other changes in behaviors that would promote uh, the protection of the health of the vast majority of the population uh, in ways that may be different from a place that had a lockdown enforced by law and then suddenly that law is no longer um, effective and thus people are allowed to do whatever they want and that may be a harder to change their behaviors that way. Um, uh, Yoshikawa-san, or Onimas, uh, Yoshikawa uh, what do you think? Under what conditions will people be let out to, you know, to go back to work? Okay, um, the condition to go back to the work is that your question? Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all. Um, at this point in time, let me reiterate that the people are doing um, whatever they could possibly do at, 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 uh, at this point in time. They are innovative. Um, 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 they are trying to do as much as possible at this point in time. And then coming back to your question, uh, in order to um, reopen the, the whole economy again um, after this, um, I believe it will take time. And uh, it is being said that uh, uh, this emergency situation will be extended um, at least towards the end of May. But uh, you see, if the number of the uh, infected decrease substantially, that would be the, uh, the, uh, the minimum condition to reopen the economy again in the future. That's how I see. But it will take time. Yeah, Onimasan. One thing that uh, happening in, in Japan right now is the quite unique discussion that uh, every governor suggested to the government, let's start the school from the uh, September because other all over the world, uh, they start in September. Only Japan has started April. But nowadays, from the, uh, starting from the March, we are closing the schools. So the governors says, oh, let's start the uh, the schools from the uh, not uh, June or July or let's start it from September and then the government has to think of it right now that's the one unique uh, discussion that we we are having right now that sounds like a very difficult decision to make including how to, how to get the mothers back to work uh, there's one last question that I would like to um, bring to your attention here which is um, and and the, the person who asked about the testing, may I uh, recommend that you dial back in next week when we talk about the medical system and the, and, and the medical aspects of the pandemic. Um, the question is about the Olympics. Um, how can we make sure that we'll have the Olympics next year? And uh, we have one minute left, so if anybody has a, a, a plan on how we can save the Olympics and ensure that they will happen. Onuma-san, do you have a government insight? Um, it's very hard to say right now, and then uh, I hope we could have Olympic Games next summer, but it's a very difficult situation still. All right, well, let's hope that we will indeed have uh, the Olympics, and, um, uh, and I'm positive, I think that um, we, should, we should all uh, count on it. Um, I would like to thank the panelists for a great discussion. And before you all leave, uh, allow me to remind you uh, of our upcoming uh, events where some of the questions that we did not get to today will be addressed. Uh, next week, we will talk about public health uh, and the issue of testing and um, the situation in the hospitals. Um, and we will have uh, our own Dr. Kiyoizumi. Uh, we have Ryoji Noritake, who is from the Health and Global Policy Institute in Tokyo, and uh, Dr. Sidonis, who is at UC San Diego's medical school. Uh, the week after, we will talk about changing workplace and human resource management. And um, uh, we have um, 
uh, Kyota Omori, who is the chairman of the Mitsubishi Research Institute, David Richards from Morgan Stanley, a UCSD Triton, uh, and uh, Lei So from Amazon Japan. Um, and uh, on May 19th, we will talk about the economy with uh, Robert Feldman and Takeo Hoshi, two of the uh, leading uh, economists on Japan right now. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you would like further information on our activities, please go to jfit.ucsd.edu. Thank you, everybody. And goodbye for now. <laughs>